Hello all. Today I'm going to demonstrate something that you have seen often but most likely did not think much about. Now before I demonstrate, I just want to make sure you know three facts. The first fact is that dense objects sink. Right? Anything that is heavy will normally go down the glass. Second point, solids are more dense than liquid. Okay, a solid object, because of the molecular arrangement, will naturally be more heavy and so it will be more dense than liquid where the molecules are more loosely arranged. Third fact is, ice is an example of solid water. So based on these three concepts, we can make a conclusion that since ice is solid water, so ice should be more dense than liquid and that would mean ice should sink. So let's see if this concept is going to be true. Here I put in a solid stone, solid marble and solid water that is ice cubes. I'm going to pour water in and the ice did not sink. Instead, ice floats. I mean, of course, you've known this, but we've never really thought about it based on science. Because the theory says, if you are solid, you must sink. So why water does not sink? So I'm Vignesh from BioWorld, and I'm going to explain this to you. Before I move on to the explanation on why ice floats, let me just remind you what we have covered in our video of water part 1. We've discussed the bond angles, polarity, hydrogen bonding, cohesiveness, surface tension and solvent. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about three more physical properties which are density, specific heat capacity and latent heat of vaporization. We'll start off with density. The thermometer here is showing us a temperature of 100 degrees. Now water molecules at this temperature will have high kinetic energy. This will prevent them from forming any hydrogen bond. Without hydrogen bonds holding water molecules together, the water molecules will move far apart, making their volume bigger. Now, when volume is high, density will become less. That means the water vapor will start to become lighter and float upwards. Now let's compare the other end of the thermometer at 0 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, water has no kinetic energy. It stays still. So this enables it to form the maximum four hydrogen bonds. Since water molecules are locked by these four hydrogen bonds, they actually form a pattern known as the lattice pattern. This lattice pattern fixes the water molecules so they do not move far away from each other. In this way, their volume when compared to water vapor, water in ice has a smaller volume. So when its volume is smaller, then the density is bigger. That means it will get heavier. Do keep in mind that I am comparing ice cubes to water vapor. So when we compare these two, ice cubes have a higher density than water vapor. So of course, since it is heavier, in this situation, it will move downwards.
Before I continue to discuss the arrangement of water molecules in liquid, I just want to show you examples of the lattice pattern formed by water molecules when in the form of ice. These pictures that you see are actually microscope images of snowflakes. Snowflakes are ice. So these are the lattice patterns formed by the hydrogen bonding. See how beautiful nature can be? But let's not sidetrack. Let's return to water in liquid form at 25 degrees Celsius. So at around this temperature, anywhere between 0 to 99 degrees Celsius, water you see will have kinetic energy. Of course, the kinetic energy is not as high as in water when at 100 degrees Celsius, but the movement of the water molecule prevents it from forming four hydrogen bonds. In liquid form, water actually is only able to form three hydrogen bonds at any one time because it will keep breaking its bond since it has kinetic energy. So the loose water molecule will start to move closer to the other water molecules. So you can see in this way, the volume of the water molecules in liquid form is actually less compared to the volume when it was in solid form. And of course, if the volume is less, then water in liquid form is going to have a higher density than water in solid form. It is found that water is actually most dense. That means it is heaviest, not at 0 degrees Celsius, but at 4 degrees Celsius. We will discuss about the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius later when I explain physiological roles. Let's move on to the next physical property. The next physical property is high specific heat capacity. We can use this property when talking about water boiling or when water is freezing. Let's understand the definition first. Specific heat capacity refers to the amount of heat that must be absorbed by 1 gram of water so that the temperature can increase by 1 degree Celsius. This is in reference to water boiling. But we can also use the term high specific heat capacity for water freezing. Only this time it is the amount of heat that must be lost by 1 gram of water to reduce the temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Water has a high specific heat capacity mainly because water molecules have so many hydrogen bonds. You see, if water wants to increase its temperature, it must break all those hydrogen bonds. It can only break the hydrogen bonds if water molecules have high kinetic energy. So how can it get high kinetic energy? It will have to absorb a lot of heat. Likewise, in the case of losing the temperature, water will have to lose its kinetic energy. So the water molecules must be static then only they can form new hydrogen bonds. Like I mentioned earlier, in ice, water makes four hydrogen bonds. Uh, so that is why the water must lose all that heat so that the kinetic energies are reduced. We have reached the final property that is high latent heat of vaporization. As you can see in this animation, water is escaping from its liquid form into a vapor. To do this, it actually involves the latent heat of vaporization 
where 1 kilogram of water, you can say 1 gram or so, depending on the unit provided. Okay, but here we keep to 1 kilogram of water, must absorb a large amount of heat, this time not to increase the temperature, but to convert water which was in liquid state to gaseous state. Now these terms, specific heat capacity and latent heat of vaporization, you have actually learned in your lower forms under uh, chemistry and maybe physics. So it's not something brand new. Now we have completed our discussion on both chemical as well as physical properties of water. In my third part of water, I will discuss the physiological role of water in organisms. So until I see you then, bye-bye.